Hello and welcome on board of Jumbo. Yeah, for those who do not know me, my name is Martin. Yeah, and that actually is Jumbo, a Bavaria 34 holiday. We are currently on Lanzarote in the Marina Rubicon and are preparing the next adventure. So actually we would like to sail around the Northern Atlantic, crossing the Atlantic Ocean in January, then sail around a few islands in the Caribbean Sea and then departing in summer or probably in May to the Azores and then sail from the Azores to the Netherlands where I would like to be in September next year. I already did some preparations in April and May. So in May I put the solar panels in which give uh, me enough electricity and then also in, in April I installed a new navigation system there are many things to consider. For instance, the insurance is a topic. So I want to, to have the, the ship uh, fully insured uh, in the same manner as cruising in uh, Europe. Then also yeah, having enough food, having enough water whilst crossing the Atlantic, which I will do single-handed uh, as well. Yeah, but first of all, let's have a look on the plan and uh, how we want to sail it. Since end of August we are here on Lanzarote in the Marina Rubicon. I started in June in the Netherlands. I started single-handed near Stavoren, went towards Den Uva, then locked through to the North Sea, past Texel and then it has been running very well towards Dover. Then I had a breakdown situation near Eastbourne which forced me to sail south to Fécamp. In Fécamp I could fix it, but it took me a week, so I lost one week in Fécamp. From there I sailed through to Porto, also single-handed. It was a fantastic journey, I really enjoyed that. Some very nice night cruises through the English Channel Islands and then uh, over the Biscay Bay. Then it was a little bit rough here at the Costa da Morte in the northwest of Spain. So we had wind force 7, the currents against it, so the waves were a little bit tricky but uh, Jumbo made it very well. So then I arrived in Porto and from Porto I sailed down to Lisbon with my partner Anke. Then Jumbo stayed here for a couple of weeks when I was in Germany and then I sailed from here to Madeira with my friend Klaus which was a fantastic journey. We did some single-handed MOB maneuvers, very interesting. Then we saw a jumping whale, fantastic. Then we had a look on, on Madeira, very nice island. From there I sailed single-handed to La Palma, had a look at uh, La Palma, also a very nice island. And then I sailed via El Hierro to La Gomera and from there to Tenerife and from Tenerife to Lanzarote, we arrived at the end of August. And then in October we had three weeks uh, visiting Fuerteventura, Lanzarote and La Graciosa. That has been a fantastic cruise, about two and a half thousand nautic miles. And then obviously uh, I had to make a decision how to go back because I would like to be back in the Netherlands in September next year. So we could have sailed more or less the same way back via Portugal, Spain, France and uh, English Channel. That is uh, one option. But the other option which I had in my mind as well was uh, crossing the Atlantic Ocean and then sailing a little bit in the Caribbean Sea and then returning in summer next year via the Azores to the Netherlands. Because Jambo has done a fabulous job, really great, in difficult situations. Uh, Costa da Morte was, uh, was one of the tricky situations. But also here at the Canary Islands, uh, we have the so-called acceleration zones, where the wind is very strong between the islands and also the waves were partially a little bit extreme, three meters, four meters high, and Jumbo did a fantastic job. Also the new navigation system with a new autopilot computer in combination with the autopilot motor did a fantastic job. Yes, I had the breakdown situation, but uh, that was uh, the Luma autopilot motor. I need to be prepared for that. Based on that good performance, I've made the decision to cross the Atlantic Ocean I will do that single-handed as well and then sail a little bit in the Caribbean Sea 
and then return via the Azores to the Netherlands where I would like to be in September next year. I would suggest we have a look on the chart how we want to sail. We are here on Lanzarote and the first stop in the Caribbean Sea is Guadeloupe, that's what I have chosen. So the direct way would have a distance of about 2740 or 50 nautic miles. There are actually three options, either sailing directly or going more south or even stop on the Cap Verde Islands and then sail from the Cap Verde Islands to the Caribbean Sea. So what we will do is probably sailing a little bit south, finding the Passat winds and then set the course westerly and sail to Guadeloupe. So that, that's the plan so far. So let's have a look on the current uh, wind situation as well. So we have uh, Lanzarote here and Guadeloupe is here. What we see is that the Passat is starting a little bit uh, more south. So almost here at the Cap Verde Islands. So we will choose that middle course. Let's see how it develops over the next few days. That obviously will change. Yeah, we, we can see it's uh, more or less stable. The east northeast wind. I expect it similarly in January, but obviously it can change. Obviously we would like to get weather data on the Atlantic crossing as well. We are too far away from the coast to get mobile data and uh, get it on the iPad or on the mobile phone. So I've chosen the Garmin InReach Mini, which I just bought. So you can sign a contract and then you get weather data on a daily base or in the frequency you like it. I haven't activated it yet. So we'll do that uh, in, a, in a few days, but we will have a look at that uh, and how it works uh, on the Atlantic Ocean. Actually, I would like to cross the Atlantic Ocean in January. Uh, at the moment, uh, it, it might be the 7th of uh, January. It depends a little bit on the preparations. So basically, the time between December and April is good for the Atlantic crossing. The wind conditions should be all right from a statistical standpoint. But let's have a look on the, on the pilot charts as well, which I have here on my computer. So this is a pilot chart for the Northern Atlantic for January. Here are the Canary Islands, and here are the Lesser Antilles, and this is Guadeloupe. So if we cruise something like that, so a course like that, then statistically we have about 50% Northeast wind, force four, or east wind, also force four. So we can see here it's uh, force five. So between the uh, wind force four and five coming out of northeast or east. So that will be a downwind cruise. What we also can, can see is that uh, we have currents going slightly to the west as well, which are also supporting us on the cruise. That means we can plan with a slightly higher mileage than uh, we are usually doing. That doesn't look too bad, at least from a statistical standpoint, but I think we, we can expect that it will be similarly, that we will be sailing downwind. Yeah, I'm always getting very excited uh, looking on those pilot charts and uh, looking on, on this chart, how it will cruise across the Atlantic Ocean. It's very interesting to, to check uh, what time I might need to sail over the Atlantic to Guadeloupe. We can expect currents running with us. Usually I calculate it for the day with five and a half knots and 24 hours. It would be 132 nautic miles. I think here we can be a little bit more optimistic. If we calculate with six knots, that would be 144 nautic miles per day. As we are not sailing directly, but uh, set up a more southerly course in the beginning and then go on westerly course that uh, will not be the shortest distance which was 2750 nautic miles so i expect probably having 3000 or 3100 nautic miles 
So if we calculate that and divide that by 144 nautic miles, then we might need 21 and a half day. So that means if I leave Lanzarote on the 7th of January, we can expect arriving around the 29th of uh, January. Whew. <laughs> I've chosen Guadeloupe as a first stop because first of all I would like to see the island and secondly it's a little bit easier for customs clearance because it's it's a French island so the so-called European islands are a little bit easier to handle from a customs clearance standpoint than the others. Let's have a look what we will do afterwards. So this is Guadeloupe which I will visit. I will sail around a little bit and then after Guadeloupe I would like to visit Antigua and Barbuda as well. Probably that takes another couple of weeks and then I would like to arrive in St. Martin. That's another yeah, European island. The northern part is French and the southern part is Dutch. So here's a famous uh, Marigot Bay where we will stop. And then I get the first visitors there. Klaus, Wilhelm and Heinz are coming in March. So the man's crew and then we will sail around St. Martin then we'll visit uh, Anguilla that's the planet lease and then also St. Bartholomew which is uh, a little bit in the south afterwards Anke will fly into St. Martin and then we sail to Tortona in the British Virgin Islands and then we spend two and a half weeks cruising around those islands, which will be an absolute highlight. I'm really looking forward to that. And then afterwards, Anke is flying back uh, before Easter. And then I will have another couple of weeks there. And then I might sail to St. Kitts and Nevis. I haven't decided that finally. So I'm planning to depart from St. Martin early in May. And then I have about 2,300 to 2,500 nautic miles to the Azores, depending a little bit on the course and the wind conditions there. But it should be all right from a statistical standpoint <laughs> again. And then I would like to cruise around the Azores Islands. Anke will visit me there as well. And then I'm going to depart from there early in July and will head towards uh, France Brittany or South England, depends a little bit uh, on the wind. And then I will cruise in August, uh, fairly relaxed uh, towards the Netherlands, where I'm going to arrive early in September. Early in December, the weather is a little bit changeable on Lanzarote. So we just had a little shower, but the sun is coming out now. Yeah, for me, crossing the Atlantic Ocean is a big adventure. It's my first time and then single-handed uh, on top of that, but I'm, I'm really excited about that. It's such great. We are lucky because here at the pier we have another transatlantic sailor. He will depart tomorrow also to Caribbean Sea and he might have some further tips or some advice for us and we will visit him now. Yeah, let's go. We're now at Oliver's ship and let's see if he is there. Oliver, are you there? Yes, I am. He is. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Martin. Ah. Hello, Hello, Oliver. Come is it okay? okay? Yeah, sure. Great. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Oliver, for having the time for us. Yeah, you're welcome. Happy I, think, to have. I think you you are going to start tomorrow, is that right? Yes, tomorrow at 8 o'clock, I hope. Uh, okay. The weather is supposed to be fairly nice, uh, so I'll have a slow start into the into the crossing and hope that everything goes well. Yes. All right, yeah. Yeah, weather is obviously very important. Yes. And uh, you sail a uh, Hanse 388? It's and, a Hanse and, three, and you're single-handed as well? Exactly, 388. Yeah. I'm single-handed and the Hanse is very easy to handle single-handed okay. uh, since it has a self-tacking jib and the mainsail has the German main sheet system. Okay. So basically for, for tacking I don't need to handle any lines. It's like okay. uh, sailing a little sailboat uh, okay. that you sail <laughs> on a lake. So it's oh. very easy to handle and I have three reefs in the mainsail uh, which I can all uh, operate 
from the cockpit, so unless something goes terribly wrong, I don't need to leave the cockpit at all. Okay, well, Except smart. to film the dolphins. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So what is your uh, first island in the Caribbean Sea? Yeah, the first harbor I go to is probably English harbor on Antigua. And uh, yeah, that's the northeastern island yeah. of, the, of the Caribbean. Okay. And uh, yeah, I think you're going to Guadeloupe. Yeah, I'm going to Guadeloupe. Guadeloupe so but basically the yeah. distance should be the same. Yeah, uh, same, from the yes. Canary yeah. Islands, so mm -hmm. I picked one of the northern islands mm -hmm. because you can see yeah. all of the islands in a couple of months, so okay. I have to make some choices. Yeah, we, we, we both had a chat about customs clearance and um, clearing out of the European Union. Yes. And I think I found something, you found something on the internet, but uh, basically yeah. I think I, it's, it's mm -hmm. not crucial. No, it's it's it, it, those formalities. It, it, it's not not really. Uh, I, I read a book where it said, okay, you can clear out of the Canary Islands on uh, Tenerife or Gran Canaria. The Canaria. And uh, but I asked in the harbor office here, and they said, no, not really. You just need the contract of the of your uh, stay here, the, the duration of your stay here, and. Uh, in the Caribbean, you don't really need the clearance documents. Okay. You can just go there and say, okay, I was on right. Canary Islands last, and then that should be fine, and I hope they don't send me back. <laughs> and in some internet uh, portals, they also said, okay, you can, a lot of people forget about the clearance procedure uh, coming from the Canary Islands, and that's fine, so okay. it should be okay. Yeah, and the good thing for us is, uh, Oliver is arriving around Christmas. Mm -hmm. I think you expect 21, 22 days, something like that, or even e sooner? E exactly, maybe a little sooner. I have a little Christmas calendar with chocolate in it, and uh, <laughs> the last when I open the last door, uh, I should be there maybe yeah. one or two days earlier, but uh, it's fine, it's about okay. 20, 21 days, maybe 19, who knows. Uh, yeah. We keep fingers crossed. Depends on the wind, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that means uh, Oliver, will, Oliver will test it, mm -hmm. and then uh, I think we do the same, so we probably ask for a little stamp on the or the leasing contract for the birds here and yeah. uh, I, I think we do the same. It should be good. Yeah. They won't send us back. Sounds so. good. <laughs> um, how do you steer your boat? Uh, I noticed you have a mechanical uh, wind fan uh, at the yes. end. Yes, I do. I have the normal oh, yeah. electric uh, autopilot, yeah. but uh, for a long passage uh, I wanted to try out also uh, a wind vane and I picked the hydro vane back there, um, which is completely solitary system uh, so it's not attached to the normal steering mechanism mm -hmm. it has a yeah. complete uh, rudder so it's also a backup system yeah. in case the normal rudder is has some defect or is damaged then the boat can be steered also with the yeah. with yeah. the wind vane and yeah it's a completely mechanical system so it doesn't use any any power that's and great. one one uh, opt, uh, thing that's also very important of why i picked the hydro vane is because you can also mount it on the side of the boat it has See, a relatively yeah. long rudder and uh, so also if, if we are sailing uh, at an incline then the rudder still reaches into the water and steers mm -hmm. the boat quite nicely okay. of course it has there are limits, There's limitations, there are yeah. limits but, 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 but we're sailing downwind mostly, so I guess you will. Basically, the boat won't be uh, tilted over. Too yeah, much. list, yeah. one list. Yeah. E exactly. Okay. So that's basically, yeah, the, the yeah. pros of the system has a full rudder. Uh, it's a mechanical system, not connected to the, to yeah. the steering system. Okay. And yeah, I said another advantage is obviously you don't need any electricity, like me, because okay. I'm sailing with a. Electrical autopilot system, yes. but you need some power as well, I guess. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, for, for that, uh, since I'm not planning on uh, staying at anchor for months at a time, uh, I picked the option of the Watt and Sea Hydro Generator, which will be uh, placed on the other side of the boat. Okay. And the Watt and Sea Hydro gen Generator has very low friction, so it doesn't really slow me down, mm -hmm. and it's, it's supposed to produce enough energy to keep the whole boat going at a speed of okay. about six knots which is the average speed of this okay. boat uh, at least based on my experience so far so if, if I sail and travel at around six knots uh, of speed then the boat should be fully self-sustained with electrical energy okay so yeah because I didn't I noticed there are no yeah. solar panels and uh, no wind turbine but uh, exactly we keep fingers crossed for you exactly and I think <laughs> you will tell us how it works out yeah <laughs> in case it's not side. enough I can still start the motor <laughs> and then produce energy that way yeah. so it's basically a yeah. dual system yeah. uh, obviously I mean you are about three weeks away mm -hmm. from uh, 
the next marina. Obviously, you need a lot of food and uh, water. And how did you manage that? What What did you buy? Yeah. Um, I actually bought food for about three to four months, uh, so I could sail okay. considerably <laughs> longer. But so if uh, something goes completely <laughs> wrong. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, but the thought behind that was that I also wanted some provisions for the Caribbean, yeah. uh, so that I don't have to go shopping first thing I, I get there, That's and uh, that I have some basics on board also for the two or three months until I reach the United States. And uh, even though there are obviously uh, sufficient uh, options or possibilities of provisioning in the Caribbean as well, but uh, I just wanted to have some stuff on board and since I'm traveling alone the weight isn't a problem so I just bought uh, food for three to four months and okay. it's uh, basically, uh, it also has the duration uh, date that's March okay. basically, so, so that's okay. Yeah. And, and, and fresh water, I, I think you start some yeah, quite, also quite a lot. I have 100 <laughs> liters of, of fresh water, drinking water in 5 liter uh, jugs and uh, that should last me also a lot longer than 3 weeks, uh, probably okay. about 6-7 weeks. And uh, But also the thought behind that, I have some water for the Caribbean, I don't have to go shopping right away, so I will also have a couple of weeks of, of water along for that, so okay. should be fine. Sounds good. Yeah. But also you produce your own water as well, that's another backup and also for showering and exactly. washing that's, the hands that's, or that's, something that's, like that. That's an increased comfort and also an added security. Um, and I have cool. a little water maker which produces about 30 liters of, of fresh water per hour. So I have a 300 liter water tank, so it takes about 8 to 10 hours to, to fill up if it's completely empty. Okay. And uh, yeah, that can be used for, for showering, for doing the dishes, but also it has a separate outlet um, where the water maker pushes the water through directly, directly through this outlet and not through the water tank. Mm -hmm. So I can also fill drinking bottles okay. and the quality of the water is drinking quality. Okay. And um, so in case uh, the water tank isn't quite as clean anymore after a little while, then I can also use the, that route through the extra outlet, fill the water bottles and then uh, switch it to the tank again and uh, fill the tank and use it for showering and, yeah. and dishes etc. So it's just a little added comfort uh, if I don't have no, to watch the water. That safety yeah. aspect as well, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, as long right. as it's running, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any problems. With it, yeah. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Oliver, that sounds very exciting and uh, I'm getting more and more excited as, as we are talking, obviously yeah. for my own Atlantic crossing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Thanks for your time. You're very welcome. It is exciting, yeah, so I'm also looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> starting. I, I can imagine. And, uh, <laughs> A lot of uh, good advice for us as well. I mean, I can can use uh, some of the tips and recommendations uh, for my crossing, which are very well, useful. Well, we've talked a lot about the crossing, <laughs> our, our both our crossings. So it was a two-way street. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so I also got a lot of tips from you. So thank you for that. Okay, and, my uh, pleasure. I hope that we are both well prepared now. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I, think, uh, I think. We will. Yeah, let's uh, knock on wood. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, we will see us uh, tonight for the little farewell dinner. Perfect. Yeah. Sounds before good. the landing crossing, and, and obviously tomorrow morning when you are departing, we will help you with the lines. That's great. So I won't scratch the neighboring boat here. Ah, let's be that. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Super. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Great pleasure for us spending the last evening with Oliver, also Thomas from the sailing yacht Picaron is joining us tonight. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Yeah, Oliver, all the best yeah. for your Atlantic crossing. Thank you very much. And cheers. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. 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 So Oliver has departed this morning, what a great moment, really exciting for me, 
sinking on my Atlantic crossing in five weeks time really great also the discussions we had with Oliver yesterday have been very beneficial getting his point of view to see how he is preparing for his Atlantic crossing and I think that's the important point getting information from here and there getting different point of views and then making up your own mind how you want to do it obviously a few things are crucial like having enough food having enough uh, water to drink that's really good really exciting yeah what else uh, needs to be considered insurance for the boat I sorted that out half a year ago I contacted my old insurer I have to say because I changed the insurance company and they surprised me with an assessment of the boat on short notice in the beginning everything was clear and then I say no we need an assessment of, of the of the boat and then I changed the insurance company and then just a rig check was necessary uh, actually I failed that rig check so I renewed the complete rig so where there were some plates broken and also some wires were broken but uh, it's my own safety so it was good that I did that and also good that I changed that so what else needs to be considered health insurance I signed a contract with the company for the eight months uh, rather cheap from my standpoint it's below 300 euros for the eight months I'm traveling if you go to the United States it uh, is usually um, much more expensive uh, twice or three times the premium you are paying so this one is, is very good it's just Caribbean Sea and then Azores and uh, back in Europe also some other insurance topics like pension insurance have been uh, sorted out actually I keep my residence in, in Germany that is also another option to be considered if you're going on a longer cruise you could uh, uh, leave the country and uh, give away your residential status it might have some advantages from a tax standpoint so I keep my my home my residential status in Germany for the eight months apart from that I think I've sorted out everything I needed to sort out there I'm going to fly back to Germany in a couple of days time and then I will be back after Christmas spending the final days here doing those final preparations buying the food and probably some other little things cleaning the boat finally again and then I will depart 7th or 8th or 5th of January I make it dependent on the weather forecast uh, by that time yeah but I'm really excited I'm looking forward to that and cannot wait the moment departing from here really great Hello, I'm back in Marina Rubicon on Lanzarote. I've arrived about 10 days ago with Anka and her daughter Jana. So I've done some fun little preparations here on board. And yesterday I brought both to the airport and we had to say goodbye for quite a while. So we both had, had tears in the eyes. So it's a long time. But, but Anka will come in, in, in March to to uh, St. Martin, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, and then I, I've started yesterday putting the first uh, food on board. So I drove to the supermarket and uh, two times and uh, put the boot full with food and noodles and uh, all those kind of things. But uh, let's have a look downstairs. I've bought 150 liters drinking water and I think the food will last probably also for a couple of months. Yeah, all the fresh food, everything which uh, doesn't last that long, like meat and yogurt, etc. I will buy tomorrow because today is a bank holiday here in Spain on the Canary Islands. I've also activated my InReach Mini, so I get all the weather information on the Atlantic Ocean, can send messages to home and uh, yeah can be can be connected there's not much more to do the dinghy on board the outboard up I will do that uh, later on today and then cleaning the boat because it's uh, still very dusty and obviously also cleaning the solar panels they are full of dust and then tomorrow after the 
return from the supermarket saying goodbye to the marina office and returning the rental car and then this evening probably having a final beer in the one sailors bar having a good night hopefully and then I see you on the other side.